people who've taken their land away from the people of this country many decades and centuries ago. They stole the land. But today they say the same thing. We say the land must be shared to common amongst all of us, all the people of South Africa. We also say that we must create jobs. But it must be jobs that are proper jobs, not fake jobs. Not jobs where today you have a job, tomorrow you get out of job. Someone who's able to work to look after their families, to earn a decent salary, and to be able to take care of their children. All of you suffered because of your children. I'm sure all of you can tell me today that your businesses have been badly affected by your children. Terrible. Often in these malls, if you don't have generators, when the electricity goes, it dies. When it's darkness, you lose business, but there's also theft. All of that you would explain. Now we in the EFF say it is possible to end virtue and to end equality. We must make sure that the government takes control. Put proper and good managers in all our power stations. Make sure that we use the major resource that we have to generate electricity in South Africa, which is coal. You know, Western Europe and the Americans tell us we must stop using coal. They say we must use so-called renewable energy, sun, wind, all of those things. Now, we're not against it. But those renewable energies are not reliable. They're not good enough to keep our electricity supply going. So we must make sure that we use our coal, that we run our power stations properly, that we appoint managers who are effective in running those power stations. We believe that we can do it. We believe that in a short period of time, we can bring an end to load shedding. In fact, we believe that load shedding is deliberately created by this country. You know, it's very strange. When there's a Rugby World Cup, where they like rugby, they want to be able to watch rugby, then suddenly the electricity is there. No load shedding. Now, I don't understand, I don't understand, I don't know that electricity knows when there's a rugby world cup and when not.
If you look at the policies of the EFTA, we have worked out very carefully plans to make sure that they will be running water, clean running water for all the people of South Africa. I agree with you what you say about coal. You can go to the big export harbor, Richards Bay. The trucks are standing in queue to take our coal out. And then we have to buy expensive coal and expensive materials back into South Africa. And that is the way they exploit us. So we must bring an end to that. Now, Mr. Khan, I do not want to go into all the details of our manifesto today. I want to say to you, we are committed to the return of the land to the people, to the creation of decent, sustainable jobs for the people. And we are committed to bring an end this load shift, and it will happen quickly under the year. So what I'm asking of all of you, please, the elections are coming. Those of you who are registered to vote, who are able to vote, please come and vote for the year. We will address your problems. We will make sure that your challenges as business people will be addressed. We look at you all, doesn't matter from which minority group you come, we look at you all as fellow South Africans. We embrace you as fellow South Africans. And I ask you, once the election is over and we have been elected as the government of South Africa, and we put our commander in chief, President Julius Maleva, in the union buildings as the president of South Africa. Yes. Take us on our promises. Yes. We are not people just to talk. We are people who act. When the EFF says we're going to do something, we do it. And I spoke to Mr. Khan, it's only a few days now before it is voting day. We cannot now sit and talk to you about all your problems. But we invite you once these elections are open, come and meet with us. Come with all the detail of every problem that you have. Let's engage. But give us now a chance to be in power. Because it's only when we are in power that we can change things. So the power during the election is in your hands. You are the people who are going to make the cross of the ballot paper. It's your power. We ask you to empower us through your power. People's power. Give that people's power to the economic freedom fighters. We will not disappoint you. We will bring a new life to South Africa. We will bring economic freedom in our lifetime. I can't wait for the day after election day for us to march to Pretoria. For us to take our commander in chief our president and put him in the union buildings yeah. and to put the flag of the economic freedom fighters there above the union buildings and say we've got a new government and a government that truly cares for the people. In 1994, we were given false promises. We have had an ANC government that was just stealing and looting and not taking care of the people. They only take care of their own pockets. 30 years later, it's time to move. It's time to unplug them from all sources of power. And for a people's government 
under the economic freedom fighters to run this country. When we do that, you will see true fundamental change. I invite all of you to join us on this beautiful journey of economic freedom in our life. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Khan, my fellow fighters who are here, thank you for your presence. We appreciate you. We are going to have a further event on Friday and Saturday which will be a big event of pushing for the EFP. We invite all of you to join us in that event. Mr. Khan and the leadership will make the information available. We want to see you there. Let's make it a celebration of liberation. And let us celebrate when we go on the 29th to make our vote in the ballot box. And remember, and with this I conclude, there are free ballot papers. There are free ballot papers where you must put your cross. Here is what you must do. On the first one, vote here. On the second one, vote here. On the third one, vote here. Everywhere, all the way, vote. Viva economic freedom in our lifetime. Viva! Let 2024 be our 1994. stand with the people of Palestine all the way. And I agree with the slogan, Palestine shall be free from the river to the sea. The whole of Palestine belonging to the people of Palestine. As in the economic freedom fight was March last year in September to the Israeli embassy, apartheid Israeli embassy, in Pretoria. We had the biggest meeting outside that embassy that anyone held. We demanded that the Israeli embassy must be kicked out, must go immediately. Our commander in chief then went to the National Assembly and tabled a resolution saying that the Israeli embassy must be closed down immediately. The National Assembly passed that resolution with a huge majority. So that is a resolution of the National Assembly sponsored by the EFA. But sadly, President Ramaphosa, because he's got the executive power to decide on whether the embassy must be closed or not, decided not to do so. We've also called for economic sanctions against Israel, that we must have no economic ties with apartheid Israel. But unfortunately, the ANC government continues to have economic ties. We know that President Ramaphosa's own company, Shanduka, which is his business, has a lot of ties with the Israelis and with uh, business people from Israel. So he talks as if he supports the people of Palestine, but he is hypocritical. He doesn't act in terms of what he says. He doesn't walk the talk. 
We in the EFF walk the talk. We were clear. Palestine must be free from the river to the sea. The Israeli embassy must go now, not a day later. No economic business with people who kill women and children and civilians who commit genocide. And finally, we agree that it is right to fight for your rights by the Palestinians. So, taking up arms against the oppressor, taking up arms against the Israeli government and what they do to the Palestinian people is correct. It is internationally correct, it is legally correct. So we support the war against apartheid Israel to the fullest. I just wanted to add that because my Deshaun brought that in and it was a very important addition that he brought to us. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you.